Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our Flyers program virtual launch. This is this is really new for us. So, um, yeah, please welcome to the, um, the the newsroom as we set it up. So, my name is Chris Herring. I'm the vice principal here at White Six Form College, and I'm responsible for um, running and coordinating the Flyers program. Um, the aim of this evening is to just give you a an overview of what the program is about, to introduce you um, to some key players within that program. Um, so, first and foremost, a, a little bit of housekeeping from me. Um, we're using the GoToWebinar platform. Um, it's a one-way webinar program, so I can talk to you, but you um, can't talk to me, unfortunately. But you can interact via the question function um, on the control panel in the top right. I have one of our pastoral directors, Andrea Mason, in the control room next to me, and she will be um, picking up your questions and then feeding them back to us at various, various points. So, Andrea, are you there? I am, Chris, yes. So, no questions just yet. Um, no, 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 but, but, but at, least, at least that side of it works. And then the, first, the, the first person I'd like to introduce you to is um, Paul Britton, who's our principal, who's going to give you a brief introduction to the college and the programme um, and, and tell you a little bit about um, his background as well. So without further ado, over to you, Paul. Great. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's my great pleasure to, to welcome you all this evening. Thank you very much that you can make the time to come and hear about the Flyers programme and what we've got planned for you. Um, so, uh, Chris, go on a slide, please. So, thank you very much. So the first thing is, how does this Flyers program fit within kind of the mission of the college? So as you know, the mission is for you, for us to inspire and support all of our students to achieve exceptional success, not so-so success, not I suppose it was all right success, but amazing, better than you thought you were capable of success. So Flyers, how does that fit into that? Well, look, when we were thinking about this, there is a specific kind of content, there's a specific set of skills, knowledge and behaviours that people who want to apply for the most selective universities and apprenticeships and jobs, they need to develop those skills, they need to get that knowledge. So there's this extra bit that needs to go on top of your uh, kind of regular study in terms of the, the, the courses that you're on and the other enrichment activities that you're taking place on and the pastoral support. So that's the idea of the Flyers programme. It's about giving you that extra bit that's going to make you stand out and make you kind of able and confident to apply to the most prestigious and most selective courses and careers in the world. So just to kind of give a bit of flavour on that, just to give kind of an example of how it kind of might work, um, I'm sorry, going to sort of indulge in a bit of my own story. Um, so uh, I, I went to a regular state school for my secondary school, I went to a sixth form college very much like this one down in Hampshire, uh, I studied maths, further maths, physics and modern history uh, and then I went on to study philosophy, politics and economics at Oxford University, Exeter College, Oxford. So there's just a few things from my experience that I think maybe kind of exemplify what we're trying to do through this programme. So I, I didn't know anything about Oxford or Cambridge or any of that kind of thing. Uh, when I went to, to Sigborn College. Uh, and the first key thing, look, it was my teacher. It was my maths teacher. Uh, and she said to me, uh, Paul, I think you should apply to Oxford. I think you should apply for philosophy, politics and economics at Oxford University. Uh, and I've never really thought about it. It's not something that I've considered. And I think the single biggest thing, if you're going to take anything from tonight um, about the Flyers programme, is about you have the permission to apply. I'm telling you, there is no reason why you shouldn't apply to the most prestigious uh, and most selective universities or, or, or professions in the world, right? Why not? Yeah, there's, it, it doesn't matter what your background was. It doesn't matter about where you're from. Uh, what matters is you give it a go and you want to try and do your best and see what happens. So that's the first thing, right? My maths teacher, she said, Paul, go for it. And you know, it's a key thing from me to you is to say that to you too. And in fact, um, one of our, uh, Jamie, Jamie Dustdale, one of our students who's just going off to Cambridge to study natural sciences, I saw him in the, the atrium uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and that's exactly what he said to me. He said, look, Paul, you were my prize mentor uh, in my first year here at college. Uh, and it was you saying to me, yeah, you can absolutely apply to Oxford or Cambridge. Doesn't matter where you're from, just go for it that made me think I could, and here I am, I've got my amazing grades, and I'm off to study probably the most prestigious course uh, in the country, and, and amazing employment opportunities coming after that. So that's the first and main thing. You have permission, absolutely go for it. It doesn't have to be Oxbridge, it might be medicine, dentistry, veterinary, it might be the amazing apprenticeship routes, uh, but that's the first thing. 
Second thing is the support that you can get. Um, so for me, uh, after I've had this conversation with my teacher, um, uh, she said, look, go and talk to your history teacher. And my history teacher sat down with me and she said, well, look, Paul, you need to go to this book, and this, this, this shop and buy some books. And you need to start reading The Economist magazine. I'm still reading The Economist magazine right now. Um, so getting that kind of individual support that kind of helps you, you know, explore and develop the wider range of kind of skills and knowledge that's going to make you stand out. And then parents, all you parents out there, um, I got a massive helping hand from my parents too. Um, so in the year between, uh, in the summer between the first year and the second year, and hopefully this will be an opportunity for, for all of you too, my parents took on a big kind of uh, jaunt around the country going and looking at all the universities that I'd, I'd applied for. And it was sat in the, the hall, in the hall in Exeter College, Oxford, um, kind of a Harry Potter, uh, Great Hall style, completely mad um, uh, for a boy from a, from a hill in Hampshire. Um, it was sat there eating burger and chips with normal human beings that I thought, yeah, absolutely, I definitely can apply, why not? Uh, I've been given the skills, I've been given the extra reading, uh, and that meant that ultimately I was successful at getting to Oxford. I did get a degree from there, uh, and you know, that's massively set me up um, for my career and, 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 and for doing what I do now. So look, that's a little bit about me. I think the thing that that tells us about the programme is first of all, through the programme, and, and all the people who really know what they're talking about are gonna, gonna explain it to you over the next few minutes. But first of all, it's to show you what are the options? You know, I didn't even know about Oxford Cambridge really. Um, so the first thing is to kind of really help you, the flashback and really help you understand what opportunities there are out there. Secondly, it's about giving you support uh, and making sure that you get the extra help you need uh, and the kind of the direction you need to be able to, to achieve your dreams. And then the third thing, I think, the most important thing is about giving you that permission, saying, why not you, right, think big, doesn't matter where you're from, doesn't matter your background, you, you know, everybody who applies for these courses, they've got the same uh, qualifications, your A-levels, your BTECs, they're filling out the same application form, it absolutely can be you just as much as anyone else, why not go and make it happen? Very last thing from me then. So what do you need to do from now? Well, listen to all the brilliant stuff that our, our people are going to tell you about tonight and the programme and how it can help you. There's some big things for you. Number one, you've got to get the grades. If you want to go to prestigious places, you've got to get fantastic outcomes in your courses at college. Number two, you've got to get involved in everything that's going on. Do that enrichment, do all of the things. You know, it's not the prize programme that's going to make it happen for you. They're going to point you to the stuff that you can get involved. Get involved uh, and, and get all of those wider experiences. Uh, and then number three, just remember that point, you have as, a, as much right as anyone else, um, put that application in, give it a go, believe in yourself, and who knows, uh, make it happen. Okay, thanks for this opportunity, Chris. No, thank you. I'll hand over to the experts now, and I'll let you get on with it. Thank you. Um, so, we're, be, before you run off, I think um, we'll have the first opportunity for some, some questions directly to Paul, if, if we've got any, Andrea, if we haven't, we'll move on. It's not really directly to Paul, but it, this might be one we might come back to later, but it's, it's quite subject specific. But um, it's, if a, it's a question from a, a lady called Debbie. She said, if her son's interesting more, more a creative programme, so film production, for example, how can the Flyers programme help a student that wants to go down a um, more, more creative path? I don't know if you might be able to help with that a little. Yeah, yeah certainly. I think the, the Flies programme, when, when I um, introduced it um, during our virtual white start, I said the Flies programme is very much an umbrella for, for everything that you do in the college. And I'm going to run through what a life as a flyer will look like um, shortly, but the, the key thing is that, is that we um, sign you up with subject mentors throughout, so you get that um, subject-specific advice and guidance because they're the experts in the college. They're, they know where the most prestigious university courses are or the the best opportunities from the apprenticeship point of view and they can point you in the right direction. They also know the skills that are required to um, undertake either a degree programme of, of that nature or um, to get into employment um, in that field. So yeah, the mentoring side of it will be really subject specific and I'll talk a little bit about that later on. Um, the, the other side of it is, is basically um, giving students the opportunity to explore most prestigious universities. So unfortunately during COVID we might not get the opportunity early in the year to visit the universities but we will definitely be looking to do that um, hopefully in the summer term um, in 2021. We've also got virtual open days that we're looking to host at the college and lots and lots of universities are putting those on too. Um, and, and then it's, I think it's, it's very much about 
working with students to point them in the right direction for the, the relevant experiences, whether that be work experience in the summer of the first to second year, um, or whether that be employer engagement opportunities throughout the time at the college. So the flyers is, as Paul said, it's it's a bit of an umbrella term, um, and our job is to basically point the students in the right direction. There's, there's a generic component, which I'll talk about, but there's also the subject specific elements. Um, any oh, further questions, Andrea? No, that's it, Chris, for now. Thank you. Brilliant. So um, it's it's back over to me. So um, I, I want to talk a little bit um, over, over a couple of slides about the cohorts that have gone before you guys. Um, so our Flyers cohorts over the past three years have gone off to some incredible um, destinations. We've had 14 students that have gained a place at Oxford and Cambridge over the last three years, 26 students that have gained a place on a, a medicine, dentistry or veterinary science course, an incredible 402 students that have secured a place at um, one of the Russell Group universities, the, the, the research and intensive um, universities that are considered in such high regard from employers. And we've had lots and lots of students that have gone off to high level apprenticeships. Now, this is a couple of companies there. We've had students go off to Dyson, to IBM, to British Aerospace, um, and many, many more. So we're incredibly proud of the achievements of our Flyers cohort over the past three years. We're also very proud of um, the Flyers cohort that, that's just gone before you. Um, some incredible destinations um, from a university point of view. Um, and like I said before, students have gone off to Oxford and Cambridge to do law, natural sciences, economics, English. Um, but once again, students have gone off across the country to study some really, really prestigious degree courses. So we're really, really proud of the students that have gone before you um, on the Flyers cohort. Um, I always say this to, to the audience I have in front of me at this stage of the year, that we are proud of them. But tonight's definitely not about them. It's about looking forward and it's about you guys as a cohort. And I'm really, really encouraged to ask you all to fill in um, our next step system to give us an idea of where you're looking to go when you finish work. And this was the overview from um, the 230 students that make up this year's Flyers cohort. So 72 of you have said already that you're looking to potentially explore Oxford and Cambridge, which is, I think that's our highest number ever at this stage. 60 have already signed up to the pre-medical programme. 130 of you have cited that you want to go to a prestigious university. You're all unsure where, which is perfectly fine at this stage. It's our job to advise and guide you um, over the next year or so. Two of you want to take a gap year, which is is, is very, um, I think, relevant and brave at this uh, this stage because it will give you the opportunity to either earn some money over the summer before you go off to university or go into a job, or to gain some valuable experience before you do it. Nine of you want to secure a degree apprenticeship. Twenty-two of you are not sure at all, which is perfectly fine because you're at the start of your journey, and we want to work with you to make sure that whatever decision you make is is very much informed. And it's always really nice from my point of view at this stage of the year. To, to look at this, this this data, look at this information, and um, sort of think forward to the fantastic opportunities that we're going to work with, with you guys as a cohort and hopefully help you get onto and get into those prestigious courses. So we can't wait to get started. Um, this, this slide I've had in for the past, it looks like I've had it in for the past 20 years, it's probably the past three years, but I love the picture and I love the quote, and I think our job as a college is, is, is to educate you and to get you a really, really good set of grades. But that's not it. We're not just an exam factory at White. We, we definitely want to stretch your mind. We definitely want to provide you with, with as much experience as you can, um, both in terms of um, trips and experiences, both in terms of interactions with employers, and like I say, explore, exploring the opportunities that are out there. And um, the, the rule book, it, it's a flyers rule book, but it's also a bit of a rule book for life. This is just what we expect from our flyers cohort. We expect you to, to remain positive through well, the adversity of COVID and the adversity that you've probably experienced throughout your academic life. We expect you to persevere, to overcome any obstacles that come in the way and be resilient and contribute to white in your family and society. Be honest and have integrity. Be intellectually curious. Paul mentioned um, reading The Economist and reading um, deeper reading, wider reading, reading good magazines, reading the good newspaper. It's really, really key and important that you are intellectually curious because if you're going to, to prestigious interviews, You've got a stimulate the person that's interviewing you, and you're only going to do that if you actually make an effort outside of the curriculum. One of the key ones, ask for help if you need it. We're here to support you, definitely. Respect other perspectives, be very open-minded, work hard, lead by example. These are, these, these are rules for life, basically, but we expect our Flyers cohort to, to abide by them. And if you do all of these things and you listen to us and you, you work really, really hard, the sky's basically the limit for this cohort. It's, um, it's an incredibly talented cohort that we've inherited. So we talk about being a flyer, but what does that actually mean? So the, um, the, 
the, the whole college elements on the right are what every single student in the college will get. They'll get a core curriculum, usually made up of three subjects. They might take on additional courses, for example, core maths or the extended project qualification. Every single student in the college will get allocated a, a progress tutor who will support them through their life um, at the college over the two years. Every single student is eligible for careers guidance by a careers team. And we expect every single student to sign up for at least one enrichment while they're at the college. So that's the whole college elements that every single student will receive. But then we started to build the Flyers program um, around what we feel you will need to get you from this point into those fantastic career opportunities and degree opportunities moving forward. And there are four key elements to the program. We have the core elements, the compulsory elements, which we expect all students to attend. And those are the more, more generic elements of the course, which we'll go through in a minute. We've got a really um, well-established and well-built um, mentoring program, which every single student in the Flyers program will become involved with. We've got route specific options, which some of my colleagues will take you through a little bit later. So if you're interested in Oxford or Cambridge, and you're one of the 72 or more, if you become interested after this talk, then you can work with Paul Hamer, our Oxbridge coordinator. If you're interested in the MDV program, you can work with Kim Lawrence, our MDV coordinator. If you're interested in standard UCAS Russell Group applications or standard UCAS applications, we have a route for you there too. And if you're not interested in university and you want to go straight into apprenticeships or employment, we will work with you too um, alongside that. And then the, the element that's probably going to be the most effective this year, but we'll try and, and make it as, as good as we possibly can virtually, are the trips and the visits elements. So usually we'll go off on lots and lots of university trips to give students the experience of university campuses around the country. And we would um, usually schedule a, a self-development trip, which took place um, a couple of years ago now to Poland, which um, required students to explore an academic side of the college, to explore um, basically a, a character building challenge, so we climbed the hills in the Tatra Mountains, um, and an educational challenge, we went down the salt mines in um, in Badovich, I think, I believe the, um, the town is. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to do that during the, the time you're at the college, um, COVID pending, but we are unfortunately the mess of this pandemic, so we'll make this experience as, as good as it possibly can be. So that's an overview of the programme. Your life may look like this as a student, you may study biology, chemistry, maths, you may take on the EPQ, you may work with our land support department, you may go for UCAS careers talks with our careers department, you may go off on a couple of university trips. It may look very different. Um, one flyer's um, experience of the programme will be very different to maybe in others. And the idea and the strength of this programme is that it can be made bespoke to what um, each individual student needs to allow them to progress on to, on to the next step. So the next stage, I'm going to kick Paul out of the hot seat so now, nice everyone. and I'm going to invite Olivia Underwood in, who's our Flyers coordinator. Paul's just broken my desk, but, um, and so is Olivia. <laughs> that was a smooth transition. Um, and Olivia's going to talk you through um, the compulsory and the core elements of the Flyers program. So without further ado, yeah. it's up so, to you. Thank you. So hi everyone, I'm Olivia, and I'm one of the Flyers coordinators here at White. Um, so following on from what Chris has said, I'm just going to go into a little bit more detail into the sort of core, core elements of the program. Um, so first of all, we do have a lot of flyers for us throughout the, um, throughout the two years. So these are a chance to um, sort of help motivate students, so give, sorry, to make sure that they know um, that they can sort of progress on to top destinations, whether that's university or apprenticeships, things like that. And um, we also have internal and external lecture programs. So this is where we have white staff giving um, things like critical thinking workshops to help students think outside the box. Um, and we also have um, external speakers as well. So external speakers will come to the college and also deliver sort of motivational sessions um, on various different topics. We also have some um, super curricular activities that we do expect all of our students to um, get involved in throughout their time on the programme. So I'll talk about that in more detail. So just a little bit of an example of what a kind of calendar could look like for um, a flyer student. So we do have the, obviously the flyers forums put in the calendar throughout the year. And we also have a lot of sort of classroom sessions as well. So things like critical thinking and detailed reading workshops and things like that. Yeah, and the, the, the flyers forums, we would usually um, host these in our theatre. So we've got a 250 seat theatre. All of the flyer students will come together and this is the generic support that we would offer. Um, the reason that we schedule them um, virtually every term leading up to um, the summer is just so we can we can advise the whole cohort on where they should be at this stage of their white career. So for example, the first flyers forum will be around thinking about where they want to be in the future, 
it'll be around um, thinking about um, engaging in some wider reading, some supercurricular activities, and any work experience or experience opportunities that we could maybe explore over the course of the academic year. And then the subsequent forums are just a, an opportunity for us to make sure that students are on the right track and know what they should be doing at that stage of their academic journey. Yeah, okay. thank you. So moving on to what supercurricular activities actually are. So these are any sort of activities that students can do alongside their study programme to really sort of get a deeper understanding of um, their subject in particular. So it can be anything from reading books and um, going online and doing short courses. It can be going to museums, galleries, things like that. Um, but we do sort of encourage students throughout the year and we support them in um, doing these supercurricular activities um, and provide all the resources for them as well. So, just some examples of some supercurricular activities. So we've got things like FutureLearn, which is a great online um, resource. So it's free short courses. It can be across any subjects whatsoever. Um, and these are meant to be enjoyable as well. So it's about finding something that you actually enjoy and then learning about it in a bit more detail. So things like this are not only good for um, making sure you have success in your actual study programmes and your subjects, but it also gives a good way to um, speak in more detail at like interviews and things like that and um, so you can have topics you really know about in depth and talk about like in a lot more details so it's going to help you stand out and um, in the application process so another example is JSTOR so this is something that Wyke signs up to each year um, and it's essentially an online library and um, full of loads of different books and academic, academic journals and um, it's used predominantly by university students so it's really going to help um, of A-level students and VTech students in expanding their knowledge and, and giving them that push that they need to sort of think outside the box. Um, just a few more examples, so STEC is 12, so this is a lot of reading materials that are recommended by um, University College in Oxford. Um, so again, just lots of useful books and resources there. We have Oxplore as well, this is something we really um, recommend. So it's a hub basically of big questions um, so each students can find questions that relate to their subjects and it just helps you sort of debate on that question and um, get, get you to think critically basically as well. The TED Talks you may be familiar with, these are um, online lectures so it can be from professors all across the world um, and they're again just good to think outside the curriculum and maybe just develop on what you've learned in the classroom. And then as well, we also have our own sort of recommended reading list, which subject specific um, teachers have provided um, students with. So that will be able to access on the White Flyers Teams page as well. Um, so that's another good resource for you. So we'll share all these links on the Flyers Team page and we'll also share them on um, our website as well for any parents that want to look at them afterwards. Yeah, and Oxplore is definitely one you should um, you should check out. You can lose hours and hours and hours around some of the really interesting questions and research on that. So as a parent, yeah, go and have a look at that. That's, that's a brilliant resource. And then just finally, so it's really important to do all those activities, but it's also important to keep a, a journal of those as well. And um, just so you can reflect back on what you've learned. And also it might be helpful for you to you know, think actually, I, I use this and I research this in a lot of detail and then put, put some of that material into your personal statement and into when you're speaking at interviews and things like that. So having a journal at the end of it all will be really helpful. Thank, Thank you, Liv. So it's, it's back over to me. So you don't you can't run off and leave oh, me. sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, so the mentoring programmes that we have um, here at the college, we've, we've, we've done an awful lot of work with our staff to make sure that um, the, the Flyers programme has a real subject specific um, element to it alongside the, the more generic stuff that Liv has just um, described. So there are a couple of um, mentoring um, opportunities available. The first is um, subject specific mentoring. So we've just um, year on year agreed with, um, with all of our curriculum areas that, that each area will take on the mentoring of, of a group of Flyers students. And the Flyers mentoring um, at subject level is going to be based upon your intended destination. So let's say, for example, um, you're a flyer studying um, maths, biology and chemistry and you want to go off to university to study um, chemistry. We need to know about that so your next steps needs to be up to date because when we will allocate you a mentor, a subject specific mentor, it will be a member of the chemistry team that will be working with you. And their job is, is 
to have a series of interactions with you across the, the next two academic years. Um, and the idea is that that links in with the university and the job application cycle. So the first um, one-to-one mentoring that you will, you will have, maybe a one-to-one, it may be a small group seminar with the students who are interested in similar things. And that'll take place in, in around April time of year one. And the idea behind that is you get an overview of the options available within that subject. The teachers and subject staff will talk to you about the, um, the most highly rated universities and courses up and down the country for that option, what the career options are both after college and then after university, what skill sets you're going to need to develop um, if you want to undertake this option, and what work experience opportunities are available. And that mixes in with the university application cycle because that's really the first time you, you, you need to be thinking about what your future is going to look like and what you're going to be doing post wide and if you don't, if you're one of those students that doesn't have an idea yet, you really do need to start getting an idea of by around April time of your first year. And then in June, the second meeting will take place. It'll be one to one, and that'll be based on um, your personal statement from a subject specific point of view. And that coincides with the university application cycle because that's the point at which you would start your application by your tutorial program, and you would start to form and draft your personal statement. And we would expect you to write that over the summer between year one and year two. And then in September, October of year two, there will be another one-to-one -one meeting because that is the point at which you would submit your UCAS application. So if you are looking at MDV or Oxbridge, you have basically less than a year before your application needs to be written and submitted to UCAS um, for degree courses that are going to start in um, September, October 2022. If you're a standard application, so not an MDV or Oxbridge, you have until the start of November um, for your application to be complete. So it's a really, really tight turnaround. I appreciate you only started right about five weeks ago. But we definitely need to be thinking about what your future is going to look like post wife It does pass really, really quickly. And then the more, more important one, in my opinion, is the, the final one, which will take place in February, March of your um, second year. Um, and the reason we schedule this one is because universities will make their offers or start to make their offers around post Christmas between um, January and March time. And students, for example, will get all five offers and they really, really panic sometimes and think, I've got to select my firm and insurance as fast as I possibly can. And that's not actually the case. Students have until early May to confirm their firm insurance university choices. And we, we re feel really, really strongly that, that that period between January when you get your offers back and May when you make a call is a real good opportunity to research your options and make sure you make the right choice. And we feel a mentor intervention at that point to, to help you make that right choice is vitally important. So you will be allocated subject mentor and it, it will mirror the university application cycle. Um, in addition to that, um, we've got um, links with a company called Project Access, um, which is basically a mentoring program um, where we link our students with university students. Um, so we will sign students for that as well. And as I mentioned previously, we have a number of virtual open days that we're going to um, post at the college and sign post students towards. And hopefully, we will be able to run our um, summer university visits as we have done in previous years. But obviously, that will be COVID pending. We'll review that um, over the next um, few months and we'll get information out as soon as we know whether or not these are these are going to take place so the trips and visits will either be virtual or there will be um there will be physical trips and we can, we can put them on as a college so i'm going to stop at that point because i was being ushered on by our producer to talk quicker and um, i will field some questions yes thank you for that pause chris and um, we have got a few uh, questions waiting um uh, this is from Louis. Um, I don't know whether it's a, a student or a parent, but does the workload greatly increase um, with the Flyers programme as obviously students are feeling the pressure of homework? Not, not at all. Um, the, the compulsory elements of forums will just require you to turn up to either a virtual session, which it probably will be in the early stages, or a one hour theatre session just to get an update on where you should be at this stage. And then the workload is, is dependent upon you and, and how much you want to go away and research. And my advice will be. When, when things feel quiet, then focus on the research. If you feel the pressure of your course, then obviously um, put your attentions towards that um, and maybe maybe take a little bit of a break from the research and the, the additional things. But the flight program itself doesn't bring any additional work. We just signpost you towards opportunities that you may want to get engaged with. That's brilliant. Um, question from Joanna. Um, she said her son's doing four A levels, but doesn't do an enrichment. Um, will that affect um, in being on the Flyers programme or his ability to access all the elements of the Flyers programme? Not at all. Um, the, the, the curriculum the curriculum programme that a student undertakes is, is obviously going to open doors for them and we want to work towards students getting as high grades as possible. 
the flyers program is the supplementary side of it which we'll advise students towards like i say enrichment opportunities wider reading opportunities i think it's similar to my answer to the last question i think students have to be able to manage the time and we can help them do that but when they do feel like there are there are maybe lulls in the workload um yeah take take the bull by the horns and do your research at that point um okay. you've, got a, you've got an entire year at this stage i think just make sure you use it wisely to, to be as well informed as possible okay um if a student starts on the flyers program uh, this is from victoria um and then decides that it's not for them is that okay can they opt out right okay this <laughs> this is an interesting one because I, I i think that you all of you guys are, are on the program through merit um and i'd be reluctant to, to take anybody off because that means that they wouldn't be getting the relevant information and guidance if a student feels the elements of it are not relevant for them then they can opt out of those elements but um i think the core program is it's relatively lightweight across, around the, the forums and then the rest of it is very much a buy-in service and it's what students feel that is most appropriate to them so we'll sign for us but we i wouldn't be comfortable with students opting out because it would be a real missed opportunity to get information okay um and then we've got um one from Jaden. uh do students on the bursary get any financial help with cost of trips if they're going ahead Yes, I did rush through that slide, but there's a little bit at the bottom that just says students eligible for the discretionary bursary can apply for support for all Flyers University trips. Okay, that's brilliant. I'm, I've got two questions here, but they're kind of linked. Um, so someone's asking for a sort of brief explanation of what UCAS is, um, and within that, what, what does a firm and insurance choice mean? Okay, um, so basically UCAS is the um, centralised service that administers all university applications. So a student would apply directly to UCAS through the UCAS system, and then UCAS would manage your application and then send it off to the universities. And then the universities would send their offers back through the UCAS system, and students would receive their offers via that. A student would usually apply for five university courses um, when they put the UCAS application in, but they can only select um, two. So basically, once you've applied for five, you will get offers back from all five, those offers will either be a conditional offer, which means that you've got to hit certain grade requirements um, to, to get access to the course. It will be unconditional. We're, we're seeing an awful lot more unconditional offers come through the university system these days, which means the university will give you a place regardless of your academic outcomes, or they may just choose to reject you um, and not proceed with your application. So let's say, for example, you get five conditional offers back. Once you've received all five conditional offers, you will be expected to choose one of those offers as your firm which basically means if you meet the conditions, you have to go to that university, or you select an insurance, which means if you don't meet the conditions for your firm offer, you then default automatically down to the insurance offer, providing you meet the conditions for that. If you don't meet the conditions for either your firm or your insurance, then we have to look at um, alternative um, courses, usually through the university application clearance system, and we'd support students with that in the August of their second year. Okay, just one final question then, Chris, if that's okay. Um, what support is available to students who don't know what career or university courses they would like to do? And that's from Jaden again. Okay, so th there are 22 of you in that position. I have no doubt there are, there are probably more who, who are very unsure. And I think this is the start of the journey. My advice is don't panic. Um, there'll be lots and lots of opportunities for you to explore what's available um, via the tutorial program, um, by the Flyers program. We'll give you some direction in terms of where you can research um, specific university choices or career opportunities. And the idea of the next um, the next year or so is to, to give you that sense of direction. Um, you've all filled in our Next Steps page and you've all selected a number of purple tabs. Um, the purple tabs on the Next Steps system basically shows what you potentially could be interested in. So some of you have probably selected, for example, 20 purple tiles. What that then does is allows our careers department to forward any information that's relevant to those subject areas so we can be really, really targeted with what we're doing in the future. So my advice at this stage to Jaden is basically select, go into next steps, make purple everything that you could potentially be interested in, and we will bombard you with information around the potential opportunities, and then we'll provide advice and guidance around that. Students can also book in with um, our careers team for careers appointments at any time during the time um, they're a student here at work, and beyond for that matter. Okay, that's it for now, Chris. Thank you. Fantastic. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the route specific options and I'm going to hand over to um, Paul and Kim to talk about the Oxbridge and the pre-medical programme. I'm not going to take a whole um, amount of time talking about this, but 
um, students will either fall into one of four categories. They will either be university standard application students, and the vast majority of our university students will go down and, and through this route. You will either be a um, pre-medical program student, an MDV student, an Oxbridge student, or a non-university student. And whatever route you choose, um, when, you, when you come to apply, we will support you um, through that. So if you're a standard application student, you will get lots and lots of support via the flyers forums. We will put on additional forums which will give you specific advice around applying to, for example, Russell Group um, universities or non-Russell Group universities. And we'll make sure that you are you're more than ready to um, to apply for university and then to to embark upon a undergraduate degree course when you leave college. Um, I, I do keep talking about the the Russell Group universities, um, and that's because they're the most intense research intensive universities um, and some of the high, more highly regarded universities um, up and down the country. And we want to encourage our students, especially on the Flyers program, to think they can have um, really um, ambitious aspirations. Um, and I think Tank has just done some recent um, research around Russell Groups, um, and they've identified that Russell Group degree um, graduates can expect to earn £3,000 a year more than their peers um, within three and a half years of graduating. And 80% of Russell Group graduates were in professional employment six months after leaving university, in comparison to 69% non Russell Group. Um, so, whilst Russell Group isn't the be all and end all, we do want to make sure that we're giving the right advice and guidance around the most prestigious university courses to allow our, our students to progress into. Um, the, the best um, career opportunities that are out there. We also get lots and lots of students who don't want to go to university, which is perfectly acceptable, but we want to make sure that you are prepared to go on to um, and into the most prestigious um, employment opportunities, apprenticeship routes and degree apprenticeship routes. So we'll have um, a series of careers appointments uh, made available to those students via our careers team. And once again, we'll put on additional um, specific forums for students that don't wish to go to university so they get the right advice and guidance. And obviously their application cycles will be slightly different to the university application cycle. And I'm going to let um, Olivia leave now. I'm going to invite Kim Lawrence to come and talk a little bit about the pre-medical programme. So anybody who wishes to be um, a medical dentist can have that. So Kim is going to join me in that one seat. Hi, Chris. Hi. No, thank you, Kim. Hi, good evening. Um, so I'm Kim Lawrence. I'm a coordinator of the uh, pre-medical programme. So what is the pre-medical programme about? Well, it's got two aims, really. It's to expose students to the reality of a career as a doctor, a dentist or a vet um, and to support those students who are seriously interested in pursuing that career through the rigorous application process and guide them in the interviews as well. So who is the programme for? We've already got 60 students this year enrolled on the first year of the programme. Um, in order to apply for most of those universities and meet the requirements, these are the sort of criteria that universities will look for. So we advise that our students are studying three A-level subjects to include biology and chemistry, since this is a requirement for most of those. Have predicted grades on the UCAS application that Chris was just talking about earlier of a minimum of AAA for most of those universities. So I guess it's putting in as much effort as you can across all of your different subjects across your two years here at WIPE to make sure that you can achieve the best possible outcome for yourself. Have a high GCSE grade profile, so most universities look for sevens and above, um, especially in English, maths and sciences. And score highly in the university admissions tests. So there's, there's two different admissions tests for universities, but I'll talk about those shortly. We also advise our students to undertake some work experience to really get an idea of what it's like working as a doctor, dentist or vet. And we really do hope that our students are seriously interested in not just studying those courses at university, but in pursuing a, a successful career uh, in medicine, vet medicine or dentistry as well. So what do we cover in the programme? Well, across our first year is really about opening our students' eyes to to those careers. So we start with looking at different universities that offer those programmes, what the entry requirements are, and then look at some different medical careers, and this will be supported by some visitors uh, from different professions. So qualified and practising doctors, dentists and vets will come in, and well, perhaps uh, virtually this year, and give talks about their career, and also different medical professionals as well, such as uh, biochemical scientists. We then also have a look at work experience, how to land that work experience and where to look. 
we then start looking at the skills of a good doctor, NHS core values, and then start some ethical debates, which play a big role in, in the interview process for universities. We also study problem-based learning, which is a really, really common method of teaching that uh, medical universities offer. We then start studying for university admissions tests, and then we provide bespoke personal statement workshops to support the writing of the personal statement that goes on the UCAS application. And following on from that in the second year, the first term is all about absolutely nailing that application and getting it ready to be sent off by the 15th of October. We focus on personal statements, and then once that application has gone off, we'll look at doing some interview um, preparations and practice interviews as well. Most universities run what's called a, a multiple mini interview, which involves lots of small interviews, usually between five to 10 minutes long on different topics. So we try to mirror that in our mock interview event that we hold, and that's usually in around November time of the second year. Our students then are waiting offer for interview, and these offers usually come in around November time to then go for that interview December, January time, and await those conditional offers which will be confirmed on A-level results day when they get their results. So that's kind of the program and what we do during the program across those two years. So I just wanted to focus a little bit on a few key um, points of the application, a few, a, key, a few key aspects of the application process. So we'll look at UCAS choices, which Chris has, has mentioned already, um, the admissions tests and some work experience, which I think is quite crucial to, to discuss this year, especially with the, the current circumstances. So for the UCAS application, Chris mentioned having five choices uh, for medicine, dentistry and veterinary medicine. Students can apply for just four courses at different institutions and we always recommend a sort of backup option for the fifth choice. Um, Sorry Kim, could I just, yes, absolutely. I was just going to say the, the, the items on the left are basically um, the UCAS subheadings for every single student that will be applying for university, yes. that's not specific for MDV, so you will have to fill in all of those elements if you want to go to UCAS. Yes, okay. absolutely, yeah, no problem, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, just in terms of the choices, we start off early in the course by looking at different universities, because our students should hopefully choose four of those to make their applications, and then a fifth backup choice, something related to medicine that maybe will allow them to access it later in life something like biomedical sciences or biochemistry. The admissions test, I'll just talk to you a little bit about those. Um, all universities that offer medicine and dentistry specifically, not veterinary medicine, require their applicants to sit an admissions test before their applications are sent through. So there's two different admissions tests and all of the universities that offer medicine and dentistry will either want the UCAT or the BMAT to be sat before the application goes off. So the UCAT and the BMAT follow fairly similar formats. They're mostly multiple choice uh, assessments. The UCAT is sat at UK Pearson View test centres, just like the uh, driving theory test. And the BMAT is sat at WIKE and we arrange that here. And we usually start preparing our students for these admissions tests towards the end of their first year because they'll sit those in around the August, September, October time of their second year. So we do lots of preparation to guide the students in the right direction for this. Okay, uh, work experience is another thing I just wanted to mention. It's, it's been very difficult for some students to, to gain some valuable work experience this year with current circumstances but there are still plenty of opportunities available. Um, I just want to emphasise that relevant work experience doesn't have to be specifically in a hospital, in a GP practice, in a, a veterinary practice. Many of our students have developed their knowledge and their understanding of careers and built different skills by working in places like care homes, in hospices, volunteering for various charities and shadowing nurses as well. So work experience is all about getting the feel for that kind of career and that type of environment and developing your own personal skills. Sorry, it's a little quick there. But... <laughs> That's all right, no worries. Uh, so I just wanted to sort of finish with a few key dates in terms of the application process um, for medicine, dentistry and veterinary medicine. 
and these will be relayed to the students across uh, the, the two years that they're here at White. So we send off the UCAS application in, on the 15th of October every year, so this will be the 15th of October next year for this current cohort. The UCAT that you can see there in the BMAT, those are the admissions tests that I mentioned, and they're usually sat in the summer through to September and November for the BMAT. That invitation to interview, once those applications have been sent off, can usually be expected from around November onwards. And then interviews are usually in the January time for conditional offers between February to April. And then you get your firm offers on that result, say in August 2022. Thank you, Kim. Any questions, Andrea, um, either related to MDV or any other questions that have come through? Yeah, there are, uh, there are a couple of questions, but one I'm going to hold back for um, Paul Hamer for the next section, but there's one specifically about the MDV programme, Kim. Um, why are you only accepted onto pre-med if you do chemistry when you can go into, into medicine without it? And that's from Alicia. Thank you for that question. It's not a firm prerequisite, pre prerequisite that you are studying chemistry to be on the pre-medical programme. However, we do advise it because many universities are now stating that they'd prefer you to have chemistry as an A-level, even though the biology um, for, for medicine, dentistry and vet med courses, and specifically for vet med, I think all of the universities require biology and chemistry at A-level. So without having the biology and the chemistry, it does kind of limit your options a lot more than if you were studying both subjects. But there are still op options for universities available. So we definitely don't rule out any students who aren't doing chemistry, but it does just kind of narrow your options slightly. Okay, I think I'll hold the other two questions back for Paul, if that's okay, Chris, um, for the next yeah. section. Yeah, that's perfect. So. Without okay. further ado, I'm going to ask him to pick a hot seat and yeah. um, invite Paul in to run through the, the Oxford, Oxford programme. So, welcome, Paul. Thanks, Chris. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Paul, and I'm the Oxford coordinator here at White College. Um, firstly, why Oxford or Cambridge is what I wanted to address. And from my point of view, Oxford and Cambridge are two of the best universities in the world. And why wouldn't you want to aim to? study at the best two or two of the top five universities in the world and what I wanted to say specifically about that is I don't believe there's any typical Oxford student so if you have any preconceived ideas about what an Oxford student would look like if we can just stop those now because I, I genuinely believe that Oxford is for any student and here at White College what we want to do is just assist and guide you to help you get a place at Oxbridge. And moving on into further detail regarding Oxford and Cambridge, um, they have an international reputation as well as a UK-wide reputation. They have a higher earning potential for their graduates. But two things which I think get overlooked a lot about Oxford and Cambridge universities is that they are the leading universities on academic research and their tutors are some of the best tutors in their field. Uh, the tutors absolutely adore their subjects that uh, they teach at Oxford and Cambridge and they want to teach similar minded students um, at, uh, at these two universities. So that's why really I think Oxford and Cambridge, it is for anybody, you don't need to have a particular profile, you don't need to be a particular type of student and what I want to do with this PowerPoint slide is just share with you the profile of some of last year's Oxbridge students. I know there's a lot of data on this slide, but you can see the student name and the school that the student attended at GCSE and, and further down at Key Stage 3 as well. But the real thing that I want to draw your attention to is the grade offer. Okay, so yes, the two things that you need for Oxbridge, the second one will be high grades, but you can see there, none of our students on their grade offers from Oxford and Cambridge we're asked for A star, A star, A star, and you can see Emma and Kieran and Leone. We're actually, along with Jamie, actually asked for Bs. So I genuinely think if you're going to um, take a couple of things out of this uh, presentation about Oxbridge, the two things that you need to go to Oxford or Cambridge is a real passion for your chosen subject, a real delight and love of your subject. And yes, you need high grades, but as you can see from the offers there, not always the highest grades. A brief overview of the Oxbridge timeline, obviously as the year progresses we'll go into this in more detail. In terms of formal deadlines there is nothing until the second year and the UCAS deadline for Oxbridge is the same as the MDV, 
it's the 15th of October. And if you just track over to the right, they have um, the students who have submitted the Archbridge application on the 15th of October. They have some tests and written work in October and November to complete. Generally speaking, for Oxbridge, the interview will be in December with a decision in January. And going back to my colleague Chris's point from early on in the presentation, the firm and insurance choices will happen in May with the exam results in August. Now here at Wyke, it seems a daunting thing to apply for Oxford or Cambridge. So what we want to do is really just stand with you and walk with you every step of the way. And there's a plethora of support that we've got here at Wyke, and some of the that is uh, on that PowerPoint slide. We host Oxford and Cambridge visitors to the college in person and now obviously in online as well. We give you hopefully quite a lot of support on super curricular activities guidance and what you need to be doing around those. You have your own mentor here at White College who will again support you from a subject specific point of view with your application. Personal statement workshops to help you craft, help you shape your personal statement. Admissions test practice because the vast majority of Oxford, Oxford and Cambridge students will need either need to set an admissions test or do some written work, written work. And then finally, if we're lucky enough to get called for interview, we, we will give you some interview practice as well. So if I can just leave you with a couple of messages regarding um, Oxbridge applications. Firstly, it's for anybody. And Oxford and Cambridge will not make you an offer unless you apply. If you apply, if you make it one of your five choices, then you have a chance of getting into Oxford or Cambridge, just like Ryan did and Holly and Leo did from last year. They were sat exactly where you were sat this time last year, thinking, should I apply? Should I give it a go? Should I make it one of my five? They took the risk in inverted commas and they had a go at it, and now they're going to Oxford or Cambridge to study their degrees. So my real plea from you is, is don't discount it just because it's Oxford or just because it's Cambridge. Give it a go and make it one of your five. And then the second message from me tonight is, if you want one tip, one thing in which you can be doing now, if I can support my colleague Olivia's assertion, super curricular activities are the key. And these are activities that are related to your subject, so they're not extracurricular, they are related to your subject, but they go beyond the school curriculum. It's generally not about wider reading, it's about deeper reading. So going broader into a topic within your subject area, and just outside of your A-level specification area. And these super curricular activities that you do, and the EPQ serves as a perfect example of one, are not just for your personal statement, so you don't just use them once, they can be used for your admission test, your written work, and any discussion point that you want to do an interview. So I really think the more super curricular activities you can do, yes, the better rounded you'll be, but the more opportunities you will have to use them throughout the Oxbridge process and also um, throughout the Russell Group University application process, the university process as well. So they really are key, key activities that you can be doing now, that you can be re researching now. So two messages if I can tonight, folks. One, give it a go. Um, if you won't apply to Oxbridge, you won't get into Oxbridge, but if you do apply, you just might get in. And two, if you're thinking about what should I be doing in preparation for your application, super curricular activities are the key. Thank you. So this is this is any specific questions for Paul, but um, it's also a last call for any general questions as well before we close tonight. Okay. So um, first question is about Oxford and Cambridge specifically. So if a student applies in um, September, October for early entry, can they? Uh, apply for London School of Economics later in the November um, and any other universities in case they're unsuccessful in their Oxbridge application? Yes, yeah, so there's two ways to submit an Oxbridge application. Um, on the 15th of October, you can just submit your five choices there and then and wait to hear back from the respective universities in turn. That's the most common option to, uh, to submit the application. But yes, I think to answer your question directly, uh, you can on the 15th of October submit your Oxford or Cambridge application and maybe a university or two other than that and then wait for a little bit longer before you submit the rest of your choices. Yes, that's fine. 
Okay, um, and then we've got a question from Tegan. Um, with two A levels and a B tech, and the B tech's in music technology, would they still be able to um, apply to Oxbridge? Yes, yes, you can still apply. Um, some courses at Oxbridge, like all courses at universities, request certain A levels. Um, maths, for instance, would request maths as an example. But yes, it very much depends on what course you wanted to do at Oxford and Cambridge. And then we would match the course up with what A levels you would need. Okay, thank you. This is more of a sort of a generic flyers question, but do the white flyers also support applications to universities abroad, um, for example, America? Andrea, I'm going to let you answer this question because you are <laughs> best of um, helping a student apply to Harvard, so I'll let you answer that one. Yeah, so in, in short, yes, we do. Um, we have links with the Sutton Trust um, and the Fulbright Commission. Um, so uh, they're organisations that are... Um, there to sort of help support students specifically to apply to um, universities in America. Um, obviously, the, the the student finance side of it can be a little bit more tricky because it's quite expensive to study in America. Um, but that's what the Sutton Trust and Fulbright Commission are there for as well to help with that, particularly for students on a low income or who might be on a bursary. Um, it's a very similar process to UCAS actually. It's called the Common Application, and you can apply to up to nine universities in the states, um, and you can also apply for scholarships. Um, through the American funding system as well. So in short, yes, we can. Um, and it's a very similar timeline to UCAS. And you can do that at the same time as applying to uh, British universities as well. So I hope that helps. Um, okay, we've also got another couple of questions um, around EPQ. If a, a student hasn't signed up for one yet, is it too late or can they still sign up? That, yeah, that is a, that's a very good question. I think my, my advice would be, and once again, I'm going to deflect this one back to you, Andrew, as the, the pastoral director. I would have a chat with your, your tutor about your programme of study and um, where you would like to apply to in the future and, and maybe what the prerequisites for, for that are. Um, and yeah, if, uh, an EPQ would be hugely beneficial. So I think it's a case of each individual that would like to be considered. If they have a chat with a tutor, we can look at whether or not um, there is still space in, in the classes and still scope to get onto that programme. Yeah, absolutely. So if you if you um, speak with your tutor over the next uh, week um, and we can look at it on an individual basis. OK, um, I think we've got another question from Lizzie. Um, this might be more for you, Paul. What kind of things class as supercurricular activities? Yeah, fantastic question, Lizzie. Essentially, anything that's connected to your degree but doesn't sit within the A-level specification. So a few examples. If you were to do an English degree, anything connected to English, uh, a book, a podcast, a film, a lecture, anything, but so long as it didn't sit absolutely directly on your A-level specification, so long as you didn't study that book on your A-level specification, okay? Maths, um, anything again connected with maths in any format that you've gone out and researched, not in, um, you know, in basically in a more depth, to it so so you go a lot more deeper into the topic more academic viewpoint so imagine you're studying the topic at a level at this level we really need to go to a university approach or somewhere in between uh, when we're doing a super curricular activity so essentially anything connected to your degree uh, but you're going really really deep in terms of a critical analysis into the topic i think if i can direct you towards um, a nice gentleman called sandy who um, works in our library and our learning support department is currently um, undertaking a, a PhD and he's been really, really keen to support students around the sub super curriculum elements. So if you go and have a chat with him, he will def definitely direct you towards um, some of the resources that Olivia talked about earlier. So it's, it's Sandy in the library is the best person. But once again, have a chat with your tutor and they'll direct you in, in terms of who to speak to. And just uh, one final question. I think we've answered the bit about the EPQ, but does something like the Duke of Edinburgh Award um, assist an application to Oxbridge? Um, it certainly can do, yeah. If, if, if you can um, analyse your Duke of Edinburgh experience and that would probably count as an extracurricular activity uh, which Oxford and Cambridge um, can accept on a personal statement and depending on what you've quite done in your Duke of Edinburgh award and what degree you're wanting to do at university, we may be able to get into a super curricular activity as well. So again, the short answer is yes, we just need to decide how to shape it around in your personal statement. 
Okay, that's brilliant. I think that's everything on the question front, guys. So thank you. Perfect. Well, I am. I'm going to leave um, leave you guys with just just a, a plea, really. And this is a passionate plea for me, and something I feel really, really strongly about that. Um, you guys and students from from Hull and, and the entire northeast region are at least as strong as anybody else in the United Kingdom. And I think one of one of the biggest weaknesses of our students is um, maybe a bit of self confidence around what they're actually capable of and what they can go on to in the future. And and here at WIPE, we've proven that students can go off to do amazing things, can go to the best universities in the world. And you are no different. You're actually our strongest flyer score to date based on your prior achievement. So you can go on and do anything that you possibly want to do. The one thing I would say is that you are in control of your future at this stage. Make sure you keep it that way. Make sure you take the opportunities that are available to you. Make sure you ask as many questions as you possibly can of us as a, as a staff and a, as a college. And in two years' time, I can't wait to actually show the next Flyers cohort, or the next couple of Flyers cohorts, how brilliant a, a set of students you've been. So if this is the start point of your journey. I can't wait to see where it ends. Thank you so much, guys, for your attention this evening. Um, we look forward to working with you. Take care and good night.